There was a time when electric poles didn't line our roads. There was a time when families sat on their porch and enjoyed the last few minutes of sunset, as if to make the day last longer before lighting the kerosene lamps. There was a time when electricity seemed like a new idea to our rural area. There was a time when hardworking, community-minded citizens got together to bring electric service to the Northland. Today we take our electric service for granted, but in the early days of Platt Clay Electric Co-op, everything was new, from buying that first typewriter to buying that first truck. As a part of our 75th anniversary, we want to share a few stories about your co-op and how members and employees remember those early days. Well, it's established, you know, during the Great Depression in uh, the 1930s. Um, plus that, there was a need for electricity uh, throughout the country. The uh, privately owned investor owned utilities didn't want to extend lines out into the countryside because it wasn't economically feasible for them. So in order to get it out, get it out there, they uh, uh, formed, you know, REA, Rural Elect Electrification Administration and uh, provided loans to local groups to build the lines and uh, set the meters for electricity for the farmers. All right, my age at the time that the lights were turned on was uh, about 13 years. I was five years old when we got electricity. Either 1946 or 1947. It was the first year I was home from the Army, World War II. When power came on, I was probably about between eight and nine years old. Well, I was a city girl in Smithfield, so we did have electricity. Never did I dream I'd marry a farmer. I'd always lived in town, but I was 24 when we had our experience with having no electricity on the farm and getting it. Uh, a new radio an electric-powered radio. And I can tell you that it was a, uh, a walnut cabinet tabletop Crosley radio. And uh, after years of listening to dry cell radios that usually quit about when you're really interested in them, well, it was great to have an electric radio. Maybe a toaster. When we, after we got electricity, within several days, Mother and Daddy went to St. Joe to get um, a refrigerator and it was uh, they went to Montgomery Ward and they had two and they brought the small one home and my grandfather said to my father go back and get the bigger one you're gonna need it mother was already pregnant with number three so he thought that was necessary well after electricity came about the only thing I can remember at first was one little light bulb hanging down in the kitchen and <laughs> I don't think it was very much wattage. <laughs> we uh, ordered the electric churn and the mixer. Right away they ordered some, <laughs> evidently that day. We have been saving the butter, mi buttermilk and cheese money for it. And this evening a truck bought, brought a Montgomery Ward refrigerator. Another surprise. What a happy day. Then we had the barn wire and had a yard light. Those were the main ones. A toaster. And it was a toaster that you had to flip down and then turn the toast over and put it back up. My sister and I decided we were going to do a grilled cheese sandwich. Didn't work. Cheese went everywhere. Every Sunday night, all the neighbors right there in Elkhorn would go to the little store and set, they would set chairs out and we'd watch Hopalong and Cassidy because they had a little TV, <laughs> just a little TV, but we'd all huddle around that and watch Hopalong and Cassidy. I'll never forget it. We lived on the farm until 1967 when we built a home just outside Platte City. Thankfully, we are still Platte Clay members for a running total of 69 years and counting.